Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video, I want to talk about the top 5 security features I think you absolutely have to enable in your Unify network. Some of them are new, some of them aren't, but the real added value I want to bring in this video is not just talking about the how or, or where to click to enable a security feature. I also want to talk about the why or what's the benefit each security feature brings you so that you will be able to make a more informed decision about the security of your network. So let's get started. All right, guys, so we are at my computer and you can see that I'm already logged in to my Unify console and all the features that I want to talk about today are all located here inside settings and security. This is exactly the place that we want to go on the general tab. We'll see that we have two features that are already uh, checked. These are not really security features. If they're not checked on your console, go ahead and check them because some of the uh, security features will rely on them. Device and identification, just in a few words, is the mechanism that allows the Unify console to understand if a client is a Windows computer or a mobile phone or a Nintendo Switch. And traffic identification is what allows the console to understand the type of traffic each client is doing. Let's see an example. If we'll go to our topology map, we'll see that we have types of clients, Windows, Nintendo Switch, mobile phone, the console is able to, ide to identify the type of client because of the device identification feature. And if we take a client, for example, and go to the insights, we see that we are able to identify the type of traffic this client is doing, and that's due to the traffic identification feature. So if they're not checked on your network, go ahead and check them. So starting with the first security feature I recommend enabling is country restrictions. And this is basically GYP filtering and you can do it the positive or the negative way. Let me explain. You can select certain countries and traffic to these countries will be blocked. Or you can select a few countries and only traffic to these countries will be allowed. Everything else will be blocked. This depends on how, let's say, paranoid you are. I'm going to use it the old fashioned way, meaning I'll select the block both directions meaning ingoing and outgoing and I'll select the countries that I want to block. I'll select high-risk countries for example Iran and North Korea and now traffic from Iran or North Korea both directions meaning incoming or outgoing will be blocked. Ad blocking is not something that I really consider a security feature and I'm doing ad blocking with my pie hole, so I'm going to skip that. And feature number two is DNS Shield. Now this is fairly new in Unify, but it's been around for several years. DNS Shield is like HTTPS and HTTP, where HTTP is clear text, HTTPS is encrypted, regular DNS queries are unencrypted, and DNS Shield encrypts them, meaning that the, the benefit is that your ISP will no longer be able to spy on your DNS queries. And we know for a fact that some of the biggest ISPs out there in the world do spy on their users' DNS queries. And in the same manner, attackers will not be able to, to spy on your DNS queries and will, they will not be able to manipulate them maliciously. So if it's off on your network, I recommend that you switch to auto. By the way, if you turn them off, sorry, if it's off and you turn them on, you will get a notification saying that your ISP's configured DNS service will no longer be used. And that's exactly the point. So click on enable. This will enable Cloudflare and Google as your DNS over HTTPS providers, which is great. Internal Honeypot is a great security feature. It's not really in my top five, so I'm going to move right along into Suspicious Activity. From off, I'm going to select Advanced. So moving to feature number three, all these three rows are 
talking about the IPS specific feature. IPS is a intrusion prevention system. It's a sort of an engine, same as like definitions for an antivirus software. IPS is sort of definitions for types of traffic that might be doing something fishy. Now, there is a caveat with IPS IDS. So before you go ahead and enable it feature, you need to be aware that certain devices have certain limits or thresholds they can handle with IPS enabled. I'm using a Dream Machine Pro and the Dream Machine Pro, the Dream Machine SE and the Dream Wall are all advertised to be able to handle up to 3.5 gigabits of data with IPS enabled. I'm using a Dream Machine Pro and I'm using a gigabit network. I don't have any 10 gig networks. So I am not reaching the point where I get speed or penalty or performance penalty. If, a, if you're using a unified Dream Machine base or a UDR, your uh, thresholds is about 800 megabits, meaning that if you're using a gigabit network, you will see some speed penalty. And I actually confirmed that with Unify that unlike other firewalls that you can configure only traffic from LAN to WAN or WAN to LAN to be scanned with IPS, in Unify all the traffic, including internal LAN to LAN traffic is IPS scanned, meaning that even internal file copies, if you're using a, gig a gigabit network in a UDM base network, you will see some speed penalty. You need to be aware of it. So if you're, if you're like me using a Dream Machine Pro on a gigabit network, you're well clear of this 3.5 gigabits threshold. So you can choose your networks, networks meaning your villains, if you have several of them and you want some of them to be taken off the IPS scanning, you can take them off right here. We'll select, of course, notify and block because notify will only notify you something is wrong without blocking the traffic. Notify and block will notify and block exactly as it says here. There are a few le levels of sensitivity. Usually medium is fine. I'm always selecting high. You can even customize if you know what you're doing, the certain types of traffics you want to maybe uh, exclude if you're using point-to-point -point traffic, you can take it off and save. Feature number four is dark web. I don't see any reason not to enable this feature. Same goes to feature number five, which is block known malicious IPs. Both of these engines are uh, updated frequently. And uh, again, it's some sort of a, a feature that you get for free without any speed penalty. So I don't see any reason not to enable these features. So once you have selected all your required uh, or uh, desired features, go ahead and click apply changes. Give the device a minute or two so everything will be able to uh, take effect. And guys, these were my top five security features. I hope you liked it. I hope it was informative and I hope it helped you reach a more informative decisions about the security of your network. Please take into account the thresholds when it comes to IPS. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye everyone.